no! There's no oh Kyrie! My God. From the kingdom, he has risen to the skies! Stepping foot as a replacement to Kyrie for the first time in season 12. Albert is back! Welcome, Onik! A bit too satisfied. All right, with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into game number one of the drafting phase. Now with Albert, with Keyboy, with Beloisky, these anchors in both of the teams and their respective roles. I'm wondering how the coaches are going to draft for them. We see that Geek is on the blue side, Onik with the red. Because we know that Albert can use Assassin's as the jungler or even a utility jungler, maybe like Boxia, Fredrin, and the other heroes that met might be um, making the Geek Vamp is confused because what kind of playstyle that Onik wants to play on this match. They didn't have the data when Albert is playing as the jungler. I think with Albert in the jungle, again, the big question is whether he's going to be playing utility or assassin. Because, sure, I think for assassins, we can all agree that Kyrie is number one in the world. But I would actually say on utility, Albert has had a better performance on the Fredrin and even on the box chairs back when he was in RQ in Season 11. We haven't seen him in Season 12, so we'll have to see it for ourselves here, but it's still the Paquito, the Valentina. I'm guessing for Geek Fam, they want to force Onik to be the ones to ban out What's that fanny, name? and it will work. Yeah, it's, it works for this game number one because no fanny on this first game, but they still have another assassins like maybe Link. Maybe Lancelot, or even like they can combo it with the healer meta, like Angel or even Florian. I agree, I agree. Those are definitely options that they can take here. And it's surprising to see that with Albert coming into the jungle as well, we don't really see too many respect picks for the assassins by Geek. It, with, when it's Kyrie, it's usually Ling, Lancelot, Joy, Fanny, all these heroes mm -hmm. are taken away from Onik. But you can already see Geek, they're taking their sweet dear time for band number three, and that shows you that this particular change in the roster for Onik is already a curveball towards them. Ooh. And they will respond the very differently here guns. in this particular match with a Edith band way. Yeah, it's a versatile hero because it, it can play it on the XP lane or even the roamer and the initiation from Edith. You can mention it. Like uh, the flicker combo with the onward or even the earth shatter. Or when your team need the DPS, the magical DPS, Edith can use the primal rep. How, how effective is the Edith, right? Because in my head, in my perspective, Edith feels like a jack of all trades but not too much of a master of, of none. But mostly, uh, if the team is using Edith, maybe they will play like the counter setup things. Mm -hmm. Because when the initiation, if you want to initiate using the Edith, you need the battle spell, you need the flicker to dive in into the enemy's formation. All right, that makes sense here. As we take a look at the first pick from the side of Geek Fam, Kadita. It's always the Kadita pick, whether it be for Onik or almost every other team now. Kadita has risen so much in popularity. And you know what? Let's talk about the man of the hour right now, the versatile player. Albert's the only player in MPL <laughs> Indonesia's history to compete in three distinct and different roles within a single season. Mid lane, gold lane, and now tackling the jungle role. This man can do it all. If we are not talking about one single season. We have Lemon, who uh -huh. play on the mid lane, gold lane. Uh, it was XP off lane, lane before, uh -huh. off lane before, before it changed to the XP lane. But now, Albert, on single season, he plays three different roles. What a player. So flexible. Ooh. So flexible. We love him. But Onik here, they're going to respond with a Faramis and a Fredrin. Good flex in both of the roles, honestly, here. Geek, how are they going to respond to this? Well, with uh, Faramis on Onik's side, I think they want to play a team fight orientation playstyle. That's why they need to careful about it and we'll look at that Terizla and Cloud. Terizla with that penalty zone, especially when the enemy is picking Faramis, the movement from them are like mostly uh, on five mans oh. together and it's really important Terizla to use the penalty zone on time but look at that, 1-1 one, one is coming. Great pick, very very good pick. The 1-1 one, one is what I always expect when you go up against a Terizla, a Kadira and against the Cloud it isn't a horrible matchup. This is something that I actually expected from Bigatron yesterday against Geek Fam. So Geek Fam went for the same comp. Onyx says, this is how you do it. You don't pick a Beatrix into a Claude Kadita. You pick a 1-1. One, one. It's very harder. It's so much harder to catch her. Kadita is going to have some trouble. Terizla as well. With her Purify inbuilt into 1-1, one, one, I do think that that is the most obvious mm -hmm. choice. We do have a comment here from a boy. Facing King Sans. 
let's go. We're all humans after all. Are you sure so, about that? I mean, a boy is showing some confidence and level-headedness, and I guess that's the way that you need to take when you're going against Onik. I think there are a lot of teams, a lot of players that would actually be fearful of the titles that Onik have successfully taken so far. Like? Hmm? I won't mention it. Okay. Okay. But <laughs> usually, when 1-1 one -one is big, I think they need a stopper. Mm -hmm. Like Kaja, Franco, Kufra. To make 1-1 one -one easier to open the weakness. Geek fam say no. We're not going to give you the they Kaja. They ban all the stopper. We need, yeah, uh, either some utility for the slows or some lockdown, like the Kaja, the Franco, to enable the 1-1. One -one. Now for Geek fam, I don't think they're going to go for a Franco ban, right? On to Onik. It's Something better like Minotaur. <laughs> Minotaur. Yeah. I think Minotaur would be a good option for Geek Fam, wouldn't it? Up against a Faramis, it would be a solid answer to that AOE call Alter. Mm. With that Minotaur, it can um, counter the Cloud or even the Penalty Zone or even the Kadita. When the Breath of the Ocean is coming, you can use the Mino and Fury. Yep. To immune from the crowd control. That's why Minotaur is a good option for Onyx. It's going to get there. banned from the Geek Fam. Oh, but Onik here, they have actually decided to opt for a Ruby ban. Yesterday when I was watching that uh, the compositions coming in, I was like, no, I don't like this Ruby. And then Beloisky made it work. He was so good at finding the proper moments, the proper setup, the initiation was there. So I do think that is an outlier pick for Beloisky in particular. And Geek take away Keyboy's Cho. Yeah, it's really important that I think if we look at all of the M series, most of the winner are Cho users. Yeah. We agree, right? There's always one good Cho mm -hmm. in uh, all of the M World Champions team, or even MSC, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, Cho, just a signature pick at MLBB. But here, I think Geek Fam, the reason they're banning out a lot of these roamers is because they already have a roamer. I have a feeling that this Kadita will go into the roam position and they'll pick up something like a Yeeve. And now with a Grok pick from Onik, it only pushes that agenda even further. Geek Fam need something that can stay put in the mid lane. And maybe the Kadita is a bit too volatile for it to go just to be the mid lane. Unless, unless Geek Fam want to say, no, you know what? Saber roam. Saber roam? No, I don't like it, but... Hey. And against against one, 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 one is, yeah, yeah. It's really dangerous exactly. because one, one have the needles of flower. He can easily dodge the triple sweep from Saber. Yeah, it's way, way, way too risky. But damage in this still regard. comes through, by the way. Like you can get out, but the damage will still come through. A single target. It's very can it risky. Burst? It still bursts. So you get out of the CC, but you don't but get the out of damage. the damage. But it's a one-way ticket. After you triple sweep one one, you will be oh my god in the middle of the Onic formation. But you like Mirko prediction before and Boxia. We gotta see another utility jungler for Geek Fan today. I wonder if Onik want to swap things out now. Do they want to flex? The There's Fredrin? so much flex, right? Mm -hmm. Fredrin? Grok. What would I do? Would you would you go Fredrin against Boxia in the jungle? It's a tough matchup. I would say no. I would say go for something like a Lancelot, maybe even an Assassin. Like, well, It's very risky, but if you want to pull it off here, the Ling. I would say the Let's Ling is not bad here. Up against a Geek Fam, against the Yeev and the Claude. That's solid. But yeah, the Claude can actually escape from the Ling quite easily. There you go. Solid wow. choice. Lancelot, safest choice. Yep. Solid choice. But within this draft, I think Onyx going to try to play very aggressive on the early game since they bringing the Lancelot and for the Geek Vamp. They're going to dive into Onyx jungler if they play to um, too passive on the early game. That's why we're going to see on this first game. I don't necessarily enjoy boots on the Fredrin because I do think that it's not as suitable towards his playstyle in a sense. But I like this flex better. I like Lancelot in the jungle. I think they have a better chance in the neutral objective takes. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, both compositions have been set in stone. I'm actually curious to see the talents and the battle spells before we get into the game. Let's take a look at the battle spells here. It's just pretty normal for everyone. Not really anything too interesting here. Purify as well on Chadera to kind of respect that one one. But yeah, the Katita from Beloisky is using the Pudio Shaft together. They need to be careful about the Petrify cooldown that, it, that has been reduced. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Land of Dawn, the Sky Kings versus the Geeks. 
in game number one of this best of three match. Remember, Albert stepping back in to Onik as their jungler. We're wondering how this is going to go for the Sky King. The question is, is it gonna be a nice debut for Albert as jungler or Onik will lose on this match? That's the question that we gonna see later. Yeah, we, we're excited. We're a little nervous for him as well because, you know, if he loses Ooh. this, it's not going to be a good look for him being one of the most legendary junglers here at MPL ID Season 12. But up front, let's take a look at the talents and the emblems. Does anything stand out? Mm. I think one one still using the Tenacity. Uh, even Tenacity has oh. already been nerfed, but... Oh! The orange buff has been stolen. Beautiful by Niall there. This is the information that Beloy always gets in the early game, whether the enemy jungle uses the Retri on the purple buff. For the first buff, Petra find the breath of the ocean. Albert might fall here. Thorn rolls defensively with a puncture. Nile, Tortoise is Poisson's running Keyboy down as a wall. Keyboy flickering out. One more shield, but Keyboy is able to dodge a few more damage ticks from that second skill and Geek Fam are dominating the early game. Wow. That's already just really, really good rotations coming in from Geek Fam, being able to pressure on it earlier on, pressure Albert in particular on an assassin that is, quote unquote, a lot more vulnerable than the Boxia. That's definitely something that they can take advantage of in the first few minutes of the game. Even Albert is still level two, but that's the advantage from Geek Fam if they play with Two mid laner that using magical damage and even the Boxia yeah, who can dive in into the enemy's jungler easily on these early game. He rotates too fast. He rotates too fast. On it at the moment here in the early game, it doesn't seem like they can compete with the quickness, the rapidness of Geek Fam right now. And you can already see that they're setting up for the first neutral objective. Remember, this is the first lord of the game. Gonna be reset it. Good wall. Good barrier from Keyboy keeping it at bay. This Geek Fam tries to go for more. Albert's to level three. The Spy picking up that purple buff now goes in and it's still Niall who takes it away. Albert, there's no way they can test for this turtle. Onik though, seems like they still want to go for the poke. Sans giving vision for the team, but it's obviously going to be free for Niall. Goes up with Retribution, real world manipulation, locking them down with the call. Ulster saves them for now. Sans running, but it gets taunted down. Keyboy getting out with the first blood will be picked up by Luke. And now that's another for a boy. Albert still two levels down. Down, jumps in with a puncture once again. Another puncture to go and reset. But Beloy's waiting in the bush. Down breath of the ocean. Knocks him up. But Albert was able to escape. Nile still looking for that shield unity under the tier two. But they finally pull back. The jitters. The jitters for Albert, man. It's, it's tough, right? Because when you think about it, Albert is a jungler that hasn't played for so long. Stepping into Kyrie's shoes. One of the, okay, the best jungler in the world, as you like to call it, Mirko. It's not a position that is easy to take. There's definitely pressure there. And of course, there's so many expectations onto him to keep the legacy running. And with him being level four now behind Nile, who is quote unquote a rookie here coming into Geek Fam, that surely is not an easy thing to do, nor is it a good look for him as well. Yeah, Nile as the rookie have the fire on him. That's why he, he will prove that he will gonna try to be the best jungler on this season, but look at that. Rough waves, oh, it's a Sans, a real world manipulation to take him down before the Cult Ultra even comes down. And Onik are losing the early game hard to the Geeks. Yeah, Onik is getting pressured by Geek Vamp movement, but nothing that they can do right now. Let's see CW with the crossbow tank, dodging away from the shield unity. Keyboy gets the kill. CW now gonna be chained down with a blazing duet out of the back. Shadera finds a kill back. Keyboy forced to flicker defensively. And it's another win as a boy chunks Keyboy even lower, forcing him completely back. Boots trying to cancel the recalls, will be able to do so, but he's gonna get chunked. He loses half of his HP. Now down to a quarter, and Chadera will not give Boots the proper respect. He doesn't need to. They can just continue the siege as Boots walks up and takes even more punishment. All right, let's take a little bit of a moment here, right? Because almost everyone voted for Onyx composition. So why is it in the first five minutes of game, Geek Fam has been able to lead 3,000 in economy? Yeah, because we, we, uh, they have two magical damage heroes on the mid lane and using Boxia, even th they already secured two turtles on this game. That's why uh, Onik needs to like guarding all the objective that they have. So if Geek Fam got the pick up, 
from the Onyx heroes, but but they cannot they they cannot get all the objective like the turret. The outer turret is really important for Onyx because if it destroyed, it make Gigva more easily to dive in. See, that's the complicated answer. The easy answer, Mirkers. <laughs> Yeah, but we it's don't still like early you. Game. I'm sorry. So you you just said that it's still early game, right? What are we waiting on from Onyx? Wait, but wait a second, wait, Bloiski. Rough waves gets out. Keyboy, wild charge, perfectly timed to the rough waves, and now it should be Beloy taken down. CW picks up the kill with that glorious killing notification. As Shadera tries his best to siege up top. He knows there's no crossbow tank, so there's no real risk of dying here. And he just walks back. Dude, I think Geek Fam, they might want to go dive this, do they not? It's a 4v3. I think it's a little too risky. Yeah. And that's the answer, actually, from your question, Eterna. Because they bring Faramis and bring Wanwan. They need to play together. They need to stick together to make it work. During the team fights, it happens. But it cannot work on the early game because they need to defend their own um, lane. All right. So because Onik have a team fight composition, they need to stick with that. And mm. so far, Geek Fam have been able to exploit it being able to get pickoffs on the board, and that's definitely not the way that Onik want to go about this. But after this laning phase, we should see a difference, ladies and gentlemen. But look at this pressure on the top side. Chidera just forcing that turret take from Onik. It's due to the facilitation of the team. Geek fam were able to just zone. The porcupine's away, Chidera, whoa! Plays into it to the back seat. Now he might get solo kill, the call alter defensively. That's Keyboy with Wild Charge, but Chidera gets out with a Purify. He gets caught on the barrier right now with the Rough Waves and the Breath of the Ocean with the Petrify. Locks him down. Keyboy's still able to flick around. No the way! The real world manipulation from a boy with a flicker! Slays Keyboy! That's the execute and the cleanup that Geek Fam were looking for. What a nice backup from the Geek Fam um, team because, like, from the movement with a boy using the real manipulation or even the other skills that make the Keyboy cannot stand up. But it's a perfect turtle for Geekvam. Yeah, so far, still a 3-0-2 here for the stats of Geekvam. Looks like Onyx, they're trying to defend this mid-tower turret. But with so much high ground, with so much damage, with so much clear coming in from Geekvam, it looks like it is a little bit difficult here for Onyx, and it's keeping them on their toes. 5,000 gold lead. Again, Colius, I have to ask, is there a particular maybe power spike that Onik are waiting for before they go in for a full 5v5 team fight. CW is the key, Eterna. They need to wait until CW get maybe four or five items to join in the team fight. They have a lot of bodyguard for CW. They called out from Faramis or even Kibo using the wild charge if Klaus getting inside. And look at the goal difference there. That mm, it's not too far. The goal difference from Kadera and CW here is only 1,400 gold that can be easily. Um, chased by the CW if the team fight happening. Oh, but that's that's a that's kind of one item, right? Mm, that's almost a one item. item ahead. CW he needs to catch up. Earlier on, we see Beloisky trying to look for an end gauge, but Albert here. Going rolls phantom execution. Ooh. That's a shutdown for Sans. Albert getting him low enough for that shutdown to be taken away. But for now, it's still on and playing it a bit safe. Luke getting brought back to the team. He actually mistimed his second skill. Now gets chunked to half. Taunted up by Boots, knocked up again. Albert with another engage in with a puncture. Three punctures and a thorn row. is not connecting. Niall in that bush, finally getting red out. That's a barrier to stop him. But Geek Fam do not want to continue. That's a brilliant taunt on the Chidera, forcing a BMI and chunking Chidera to half HP. After looking at that engage, we got to ask, is Albert building tank? He is. I think so. He yeah. went in for a very aggressive emblem and talent choice, but he's building into tank? But if he's building like all out damage, it's gotta be dangerous when the contest is happening. Because uh, Albert can get easily picked off is because Geek Vam having a lot of burst damage heroes like maybe the Beloisky using the rough wave to aim for Albert later. That's why he gonna need all of the defensive item. Do you think that oh. oh wait a minute? Wait, no way! Oh he almost got it. That final weakness point was popped up but Chadera. Welcome to the Chad era, ladies and gentlemen. Petrify on the back with only a rough waves. Not enough damage to shut him down. That's a Breath of the Ocean. Albert with a puncture out of the Breath of the Ocean. Penalties on dodge away from Albert. Using that Thorn Rose. Now Luke getting taunted up. Keyboy dealing some damage. There's no gold laner here for Onik. 
Beloisky with a conceal. Now the breath of the ocean, knocking boots up. No rough waves to play with. Phantom execution. The back and a flicker with the Brazos wrap, but the boy reacts to it perfectly. Now boots with some damage. Boots very low. What HP? Beloisky splashes him with water as he takes him down. That's a wild charge defensively. Albert puncture one two. One more hit from Chadera. Albert is running for the hills. He falls to a boy despite a phantom execution. And it's all Geek Fab. What and a nice tight in game. Beautiful, a beautiful, but at the end of the day, Geek Fam just steam rolling over the Sky Kings. This was your MSC champions. Does the change on Kyrie into Albert affect Onyx gameplay this much? Oh! The steal! What? Do you see it? Yeah. He boy! Always with the play, he stole that with a barrier! And now he gets slain, he gets punished, but whenever you count them out, that's when the magic happens. CW with the Inspire still running away, Rose Gold Meteor popped in by Chidera. CW gets a bit more HP right now, Chidera running him down. Weakness points not ready, CW and Chidera, it's a stalemate, both of them disengage. Niles looking for the kill though, now as Albert jumps in with the puncture, gets out, distracts Geek, but Keyboy, my god! That's a really, really beautiful movement from Keyboy Itzla. If Geekvam got the Lord, I think Onyx gonna be facing a hard time to defending all of the inner turrets, but they got the Lord right now. They can make all the tempo, all the map control back to Team Onyx. And look at the items from the CW. He already secured a lot of potential items that can destroy Geekvam defensive, like the Corrosion side, DHS, the Malevic Roar, all the penetration and all the damage for the tankiness heroes from Geek Vamp. Is it enough, Colius? Not yet. Are those three items enough for Onik to find, look for a comeback here? Not yet, I think, Eterna. It what is he waiting for? Needs, like, maybe the Hasclaw. Because it have the Frenzy, it have the life steal. So it's, it's gonna be really important for CW, but he needs to wait it. Or the Wind of Nature. Because uh, the Blasting Duet from Cloud, it's gonna be dangerous if he just dive in using the BMI and targeting the CW, that's why the Wind of Nature is there. Okay, okay, so finally Onik find the CW in a comfortable position to go in for these team fights. but wait a minute. Oh, too many mobilized from CW's first kill. Now there's only a wild charge from Keyboy! And on the call, Alter, as CW finds a kill onto Beloy. The real world manipulation stops them in the back. CW looking for the crossbow, oh, Terry finds it! Oh, the boy! CW with a double kill. Chidera in the back now looking for the CW. Has that with a nature. Now it's a taunt up and a knock up. Chidera take it low. Albert with the execute in the back. And he finds oh it. Gets my out God. With one HP. The young lord getting out to safety. The winner truncheon used up by Nile as Keyboy and Boots continue the fight. Boots able to sustain back up as CW is back to full HP. All the weakness points. And now one more first kill to seal the deal. Onik are back. 4-0, ladies and gentlemen, in that exchange. Onik completely turning it around on the back of the play from a Keyboy. That beautiful wild charge was able to immobilize a lot of members on the side of Geek Fam. And then the follow-up from both Albert as well as CW. What a comeback. This is the moment that they waiting for. They need to Geek Fam being baited to like having the team fights when Onik is five men there. Because the cold altar, the defensive like from the wild charge is really important that Onik may be playing a kiting game. That's why Geek Vamp needs to be careful waiting for the cold altar has been popped out and then doing the kiting game. Wonderfully executed here. Geek Fam initially with almost a 6,000 gold lead. It's shrunken to 1,000. Up until this point with Onik having a really good team fight composition. What do Geek Fam do? Do they look for a pick off before they go for this Lord? Mm. I think they need to look for a fight. Just a straight up fight. What yeah. do you think, Colius? Geek Fam need to pick up someone first. If they play like um, contesting the Lord with all the five men, like ten men on the Lord pit, it's gonna be dangerous for Geek Fam because Onik have the cult altar. Onik have the Albert using the Tone Rose and the Retribution more accurate during the contest because of the damage. Okay, good jumps in, good Thorn Rose! That's a Petrify used up, now the Call Ultra comes down, Retri Battle! It's Albert who wins it against Niall! Taken very low though, Albert will be slain! He gets punished for that steal! Meanwhile, CW in the top lane finds a very good base to retake for free! And again, it's an Onic W! Uh-oh... Two huge objectives. The Lord and the base top turret have been destroyed by Onic. I think it's, it's the comeback.
perfect moment for Onik and they really need to like managing the minions wave until the Albert is arrived again on the land of down and they're gonna do the team fight again. It looks like that's what Keyboy's doing exactly, right? CW picking yet another item here in that Sea Halberd. What does this mean for their team fights? Well, for now, it means that for both. Oh, wait, CW goes in very aggressively. Lou, penalty zone with a nature popped in by CW, getting out 1 HP. The co alter saves CW, but Luke flickers forward to find a shutdown with a big hammer. And the Brazier's right connecting to the back, but Niall survives with a damage reduction from the Tortoise of Poissons as Boots goes in for a taunt onto two. A boy still able to chunk him low, to slow him down, and ultimately to take him out. Geek Fam back again, 2 to 0. That might have been a mistake from CW. With him taken down, two members traded back. Onik, they've only been able to get that tower in the top side. Nothing more with that. And Geek Fam going in for the counter push. Wow. They're gonna play on the mid lane now. They're gonna destroy all the like the inner middle turret or even the base middle turret. It's really dangerous for Onik. Dodging away from the penalty zone. Keyboy with the wild charge defensively used up. That's a cool alter to try to save Keyboy. And now it's gonna be the Thorn Rose onto the back. Albert doing work. 1 HP on Beloy, no Phantom execution to be used by Albert, still on cooldown. And for both teams, it's a sigh of relief. It's a wise decision, I think, from GeekVab. They just destroy the inner middle turret and then they just go back without any heroes that have been taken down from Onik. And with this um, counter setup things that GeekVab needs to manage all the minions so they got the map control game. Because if Onik got the map control, it's going to be dangerous. It's going to be hard for Geekfam to open the map using all the heroes that Geekfam have right now. It's definitely difficult, right? Beloyski needs to find a good flank. But look at Jader in the back side. Look at the damage. What? <laughs> He's bursting down Grok. Keyboy with full uh, defense items. They need to figure out how to be able to take Chadera down. And if we take a look at the composition, there's not really anyone who can do that. Keyboy, perhaps, looking for a flag, a three-man charge. Even that is going to be difficult to take Chadera down if he has that BMI. What's the option? What's the solution here for Onik? Yeah. yeah, I know. Because on the late game, that um, Chadera damage is really, really painful than aiming for the Keyboy. Oh, 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 that was a... Oh, well charge onto the back right now, stunning the back. But Lois, he's going to be taken very low as the Cole Ultra saves CW. Rose Gold built up for CW. Albert now with the Phantom Execution, but Niall is walking him down. Thorn Rose used up with a puncture. Oh, he missed the puncture! That might be a blunder. Luke is trying to punish him right now. Back up for Onik. Keyboy is rotating, but Albert gets the dash. And he gets out. The Lord is there. I think he want to like make this really really meaningful because they need to set up the lord they need to pay for the lord and on their side and waiting for the team fights but given needs to be careful that they need to pick off someone first because before focusing on the lord it's gonna be dangerous because albert can easily contest it again like before using the tone rose and the retribution i agree and i'm also worried about housekeeping here right with the Lord on the top side, it is going to favor Geek a little bit but just because of the fact that they can, you know, like continue to maintain that top wave a little bit better here. But I'm scared, I'm worried. Geek fam, they have Chadera, Claude, who can easily go for a plan and beat execution down in the bottom side. But look at this! CW gets out, that Rose Gold saved him. He sells it for the win of nature now. But CW is a bit too low. I think Onik might have to concede this Lord for free. But no, they're still staying. Boots, taunt, two members. Boots gonna be taken down by Claudera. That's wow. a kill that marks the end of this contest. Albert now running back with Onik for the hills as Luke just gets another smash in the hammer onto Albert with a free lord to the geeks. How are they gonna go back? Because we already see that CW is having a very low HP, but Boots is there trying to dive in, facing against Geek Fam, but it's too low. Now Onik. Is l like having another kill points. Uh, Geek Vamp got the kill points from the boots itself, and they need to defensively without boots, waiting for the boots to be arrived. I guess there's a possibility that maybe Onik needed to contest that because of their lack in range, right? When it comes to siege, when it comes to base defense, with Geek Fam having a boy, that's a lot of high ground as well as Beloisky to try and go for that backline, and here is the process. 
The Roman Blaze into the back right now. Wild charge on the floor! That's a purified version there, but it's too low. The co alter grants the team a second life, but now it's all gonna be, mel gonna be melted down as the winner truncheon was used up by Nia with a crossbow tag from CW. Connects onto the back. Oh, what a nature by Chidera to survive! And it's a penalty zone from Luke. Albert buys the immortality, but it's a bit too late. Now CW handling the Lord. Gets all the weakness points onto Luke. A boy still chunking Sans low. But Geek Fan will finally choose to back away. Now looking at the mid lane, Keyboard with a good smack in the face, but Chidera had that BMI planted in the back. Never underestimate Onik during the defensive moment. I think that's the power from Onik itself. In every defensive um, movement that they have, it's really, really important move that we see on the last moment is what charge from Keyboy. He's setting the day. Sure, I think that they were able to defend it, but Geek Fam were still able to get that inhibitor turret in the bottom side. And in the grand scheme of things, I do believe that that is worth it. Onik have less structures on the board as compared to a Geek. And looking at this, that was that was really beautiful by Luke. That re-engaged with the penalty zone. Luckily, CW was still able to get out of that with her inbuilt Purify. And now we're back to square one. Yeah, Onik. It's like having a really good high ground defensive to clear out the wave minions who comes to the base, but don't forget they have Albert who is using Lane Slot or even Sans. Faramis and um, Lancelot is very good heroes to defense, to, like destroying all the minions wave who coming on their base. That's why it's the winning condition from Geek Fam. They need to take down Albert and Sans first before they can end this game easily. And now for Onik. What does it take for them to come back? Because it seems like whenever they go for these skirmishes, Geek Fam have more range to play with. And I think for the most part, that's what has been granting Geek Fam these better team fights. The Yeeve, that RWM is a problem for CW. And CW, at this point, is the sole carry for Onik. With all of the heroes from Onik, I think they, they need to play from to back strategy. Because like it's gonna be hard for them to dive in into the back line and to aiming for a boy who always got free position. That's the problems that Onik needs to face. But now Lord is coming. Boy Petri that. So no petrify. I think Onik has that info. And now it's the battle of the Lord Dance. Aggro control. Niall winning it. Taking the Lord to his side, but it's a good barrier to cancel it. All right, so the Lord once again reset it here, ladies and gentlemen. And if you guys missed it, 22 minutes has already elapsed. We are now entering the late game. The Death Timers going to take a toll on two of these team players, especially one little mistake can turn the entire game around. Look at this, there's initiation coming in from Sans as well as Boots. Storm rolls, wild charge, onto three, locking him down four now, and that's gonna be a lot of damage placed onto Malloy. But he gets out with the rough waves, and oh, gets out of the puncture. Now the RWM placed down, but CW will be able to zone him away. A boy respecting that, backing out. Albert with a good shot on the Thorn Rose, oh, he gets it! With, with the burn from that Thorn Rose, from the kit that he has. Chidera in the mid lane, oh! CW's chasing him, but Chidera gets out. Ooh, very, very close with that purifying the BMI. But they got the Chadera um, Immortality. No more Immortal Shield for Chadera right now. I, I think it's time for Oni if they want to contest this Lord. It's because it's really important Lord. If they got the Lord, they can destroy all the tower that Geek Vam have left. I don't know here. Onik, they're lacking two major resources. The real world manipulation should be back in just a few moments. And there it is. Geek Vam, they're ready for a fight if they find that proper end gauge. It's so scary. Yeah, because Altar is the key, Eterna. I think they, they need to pop it on the right moment, on the perfect moment when Geekvam try to go all out to aim him maybe for the CW or even the other hero. That's oh. why they need to play the kiting game, they need to play the patient game, oh. the waiting game. Beloy used the Petri. That was a desperate attempt from Geekvam. And now it's a wild charge, knocking Beloy up. That's a Thorn Rose. Beloy gets out with the auto but Keyboy take it very low. Immortality pop in the real world in Palatian still, and it forces the call Alter. Was that a penalty zone by Luke? I it was. So. Phantom execution it. now onto Jadera. Good shots with the true damage on that endless battle and the passive. Geek Fam have no resources left though. They only have the Blazing Duet coming in from a Jadera and his Purify is coming out really soon. Despite that though, it doesn't look like Onik want to go for this. Keyboy looking for the proper engage. Can he find that miracle play once again? Jadera's damage now, BMI back. 
CW still at full to their red half, Beloy. Also chunk Athena's shield. They're popped in by a boy. Albert taken very low. Phantom execution defensively, and a boy might pull the trigger with that RWM. Look at how low Albert is. Keyboy with a wall charge onto the back. A boy buys the immortality and flickers out to safety. But CW with a crossbow tag onto the back finds him. The immortality going to be sold for the winner. Truncheon and the boy buys a lot of time. Meanwhile, on the back, it's still Onik running for the hills. CW versus a boy out to with a split push. And Geek Fam have taken game one. Wow. The Cheddar sees the moment. He sees the moment that can go into the mid lane and destroy the base from Onyx. What a wow. split push. I told you, in those previous few first Lord dances, I mentioned that housekeeping for Onyx needs to be looked at a little bit closer. Chidera being able to pull that under the nose of Onyx, that is not something that we see every day, ladies and gentlemen. And this is why Frederick for Boots I don't think it's the perfect fit. There's so little rotational speed. There's so little control over those side lanes when these Lord takes happen that Onyx completely, and I mean completely tunnel visioned on that. I think the communication is the key because they already know that um, in a moment that Boots will have the flicker. He will using the flicker and the wild charge to aim for them. They are waiting for the team fights happens when no one will seize on the lane. And Chadera see the minion wave from the mid lane is getting into the base from Onik. And yeah, the split push is happening. Welcome to the Chad era.